buttons. I'm hitting one. Okay, one's going. Okay, button number two. Sweet, it's going as well. So here comes everybody. Sit back, relax, and enjoy in three, two, one. All right, ladies, line it up. The bus is leaving. Don't make me tell you twice. You're a total dildos. The Mon and Street. I drink to quiet the voices in my head. This is the morning stream. Good morning and welcome to TMS. It's the morning stream for Monday, July 25th, 2022. I'm Scott Johnson and that's Brian Ebbett. Hi, Brian. Hi. Well, hi. Happy Monday to you. Happy Thanks, man. of a brand new week. It's one day after uh, Pioneer Day here in, in Utah, which meant fireworks all night again. Yeah, how late did they go last night? Too late, like 8, 1130, <laughs> midnight, something like that. I think I even heard some this morning, so yeah, we're dumb that way. But whatever, we got, you know, the wor- one of the worst droughts in American history. Why not <laughs> try to set it on fire? <laughs> what a great time to just randomly throw fire around. Yeah, yes. let's just burn things. That's fine. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. But it was it was okay. We had a big get together. Had a, my um, my side of the family all come over, and it was so nice outside because earlier in the day it was windy and and uh, clouds and a little bit of rain, and then that all cleared up. But that meant the whole day hadn't been baking. Mm-hmm. So which helps. Okay. Yeah, which helped a lot. So when they all came over backyards all shaded and everybody's chilling had a great time it's nice to see all Perfect. nieces and nephews and their considerable others and all that kind of stuff my brother matt eating all the food in front of him it's great always fun to watch that missed wendy mm-hmm. here but what are you gonna do she's not mm-hmm. here yeah uh well we had a I, good time uh, it was nice i cranked out uh lift rides I, there was a there was a hit 44 rides and get a bonus thing that i thought well there's no way i'm ever gonna hit it right because i had that big Colorado Springs ride on Monday last week, mm-hmm. and then and that you know was basically like three hours of my time on on two rides. Uh, so I'm like, well, all right, I'm not going to get I'm not going to get that bonus. But um, oh, I almost forgot uh, I got to play this before you tell me. Hold on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We have lift Whoops. music. Where is this? And he woke up and he realized they were still driving. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Some Bruce Willis that's, thing. That's the lift intro? Yeah, I don't know where that's awesome. from, but it's Bruce Willis talking about driving. Anyway, go, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, but for whatever reason, I lucked out on... Uh, I decided to, to just go for an hour and a half while Tina was grocery shopping and and taking care of a couple things that she wasn't going to be able to sit down and watch TV with me anyway on uh, Saturday night. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'll just do a little Saturday night lifting. My favorite John Travolta movie. Oh, yeah. Um, really good. You know, I, I I make these estimations of like, oh, I think I think I might have taken a an escort to you know mm-hmm. uh, picked up an escort or whatever. Sure. Um, and her name was Lorraine Bobert. <laughs> Lauren. Is it Lauren? What is it? I don't know. Just Lauren Bobert. Yeah. Okay. Um, I definitely took a couple to a swingers club on Saturday night. Yeah. Swingers uh, How do you know it's a swingers club? Is it known to be so one? So they got in the car, and uh, I look and see, uh, you know, I basically look at the destination so that I can confirm. After I confirm the name, I confirm the destination with them. Yeah. And uh, um, and so I say, oh, Scarlet Ranch. Wow, what's is that a restaurant? And they <laughs> giggle a little bit. Mm. You no, know, it's, a, it's a club. Oh. But they have a really good restaurant there. Like, oh, okay. Uh, mm. <laughs> we're thinking all right that seemed a little that seemed a little vague yeah. um the whole you know the whole time they were chit-chatting and and just talking about, oh yeah we gotta make sure we meet with uh uh sandy and shelly and denise or whatever blah 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 yeah and uh we get to um we get to where the turnoff is on the road this kind of nondescript like there's kind of a wooden sign with the word with a squirrel on it or something, and uh, and I turn and go down this driveway, and then it kind of turns and goes into this nice area with like what looks like a a restaurant made to look kind of like a big log cabin kind of thing, like lots of wood, lots of you know mm. really nice nice. Um, it's an interesting motif for this, but okay. It's an interesting. I think it used to be a steakhouse. Mm. Is uh, uh, 
and um, <laughs> and I go, wow, the place looks like it's really hopping. And yeah. the <laughs> the woman in the car goes, yeah, it does. Oh my lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, get out, get out of my car. Yeah, get, get out, out of my, my car, car right now. now. Yeah, I don't want this to go any further. No. Get out. You know, and I was thinking about this. Like, oh, and, and and so basically as soon as I drop them off, I'm not even back to the main road yet, and I've got Google open, and I'm searching for the name of this place to see if my suspicions are correct, and it's a, uh, um, and it, it is what it is. And sure enough, yeah, if you Google uh, Scarlet Ranch in Littleton, Colorado, you'll, you'll find... You'll find uh, not only a description, but also their Yelp reviews, which are, are unusual. Like, oh, wow, the music in this place seems rooted in the early 2000s. Like, wow, well, that's an odd, that's a really odd complaint for this place. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> do they have, I mean, do they, <laughs> I don't know what swingers clubs are like, so I don't know what you yeah, would review. Know. Well, other they than... have little, so they have a restaurant kind of thing in the front. Atina has actually been in there because she had to do an interview. She went there during the day. Because she had to interview one of the people who worked there back when she was doing background investigations. Mm. That somebody needed security clearance. And and she didn't know what this place was until she got in there. And um, and the whole thing just seemed kind of like, this seems really hazy and weird. And then she did the same thing. She looked it up. So, oddly enough, Tina and I have both been to a swingers club for work. <laughs> <laughs> same swingers club. That's same great. Same swingers club. So yeah. wait a minute. Let me ask. Let me ask you this question. If you go yeah. in there yeah. and well, okay, I always hear the two things. There's the pineapple, and then there's the mm. the black wedding band is supposed to yeah. now be which, a sign. Which which I wear. Same. Like it's mine, my, mine's upstairs, yeah. but same thing. Like I I don't like that they took that from us. Let us have our <laughs> yeah, ring. Oh, exactly. I you know it's not like they're gonna see the wedding band and say no, you you're wearing the band. I don't you you can't you can't protest and say you're you're not going to be in you're in because you're wearing that band you have to now pull your pants down yeah right. it's kind of like white supremacists um, taking the the punisher image from marvel and, comics and calling it their own right. freaking f off we already had now, it before you now, did dicks before we go any further in this conversation i do want to say you know if that's your lifestyle totally cool i am totally cool with that i don't oh, yeah, i you don't know, care it's fine i don't care and it's and um and i was about to say that had i not known that they were swingers, I wouldn't have, you know, when, when, when she said the place was hopping, oh yeah, it really is. You know, if I was dropping them off at an Outback Steakhouse, I would, wouldn't even give it a second thought. So it's so. like, okay, I can't let a lifestyle that's different from my own muddy what I think of those people. They seem perfectly nice. They were very friendly. They were chatty the whole time with each other, but also with me and, sure. and uh, super friendly and stuff. So. Uh, and if that, and if you're into that lifestyle, good on you. Uh, and and I know I know we have some listeners who are, and I <laughs> don't know how you do it because I don't have the kind of self esteem that would be would be okay doing that sort of. Thing. Sure, I like the idea of uh, I like the phrase. Oh, you're a swinger. Good on you. I like that. Good on you. Yeah. Good on you. Good, on good you. off you. Whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever you need. <laughs> well, that's fun. Anyway. Yeah, was but like, anyway, so uh, you know, uh, it was it was a funny thing. Just to, like as soon as they were out of the car, as soon as I round the corner out of that little driveway past the the wooden scroll thing, it's like, all right, what is this place? Is this really what I think it was? Oh my god, it totally was. Yeah, I would have I would have wanted yeah. to detective that out as well. Had I thought what yeah. I thought, that's yeah. great. Uh, but yeah. Other that... than that, I did twenty two rides yesterday. Oh wow. No, no weirdness at all. All without Nothing... incident. That's good. No incident, no no goofy people, friendly people, but no like no good lift stories, unfortunately. To uh, well, it's a volume uh, thing, right? You just uh, uh, you do enough of them, you're going to run into some weird stuff. And I would think so. Yeah, yeah you'd it's think just, with 22, you might get some weirder, but nope, just some nice, yeah. friendly uh, <laughs> swingers. <laughs> JC Calhoun found a Yelp review from the page. The place itself is cool, and the people were nice. However, I got chlamydia. Would go again. Wow. <laughs> legit legit yelp review i me. wonder if that yelper actually went though you know what i mean like you don't right. have to actually verify like a, it it does seem like a uh oh i'm gonna put on a fake review for this place kind of thing yeah because yeah. you could there's nothing stopping you they, they don't easily easily well i mean yeah no verification. the fact that now people forever when they search your reviews they're gonna see <laughs> they're gonna see that you went to this place oh that's true yeah. yeah yeah but if you troll for fun or if you troll for not for a living but if you're used to it then maybe you don't care i don't know but it seems like yeah, I, I that's actually my biggest problem with yelp is 
you can review bomb the hell out of it. If somebody's mad at, I don't know, whoever, they're mad at mm. uh, Burger King for some reason, right. they can just review bomb and make Burger King look like the worst Yelp review they, thing in the world. I don't know if they do it, but they should somehow do it kind of like Lyft does. Let's say you get a bad, let's say you get some passenger who's just had a crap day, they get in your ride and, and whatever, maybe you make a wrong turn, you have to U-turn double back or something, whatever, and they, they decide they're going to take out their bad day on you and give you one star. Hasn't happened to me, but I'm kind of waiting that I'm going to just going to get some somebody yeah. who whatever just doesn't for whatever reason, or yeah, something. or they hit it wrong or who knows what they're right. Yeah. The your score is based on your last uh, 100 reviews oh, as geez. opposed to your lifetime reviews. And so that's probably what Yelp should do is like base it on the last 20 or the last 30 or something like that so that um Let's say you turn things around or, or you have a bad run of things or you just have one customer who's ticked off, you get a, you know, you're, you're, that kind of fades away a little, little seven year, uh, um, what's the, what's the, your crimes disappear after seven years oh, uh, uh, equivalent? The, uh, um, it's an, uh, not expungement. What's that called? Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, sta not statute, statute of limitations. Is that the thing? Statute of limitations. Is that it? Maybe that's it. Yeah. So. Like Seinfeld, when they're like, statue? No, statute. <laughs> it's a statue of limitations. Statute. Yes, yes it's a yes. sculpture of limitations, says Jerry. Or or Joey's, the whole point is moo. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I, that's funny. It's actually funny. And I <laughs> the point is moo. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anyway, I had a, so I had a, very nice people, and and uh, but, but at, you know, as soon as I left that place, I'm like, oh, I think that was a little place that I would never want to go into because I'd go be into, too yeah. freaked out. <laughs> yeah, I'd be pretty freaked out in there, I think. Yeah. Just, you know, just with the knowledge of what it is, it's fine. Yeah. People who do whatever yeah. they want to do, do what you got to do, man. Exactly. Uh, I had a dream about Tom Cruise I'd like to share. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. That this seems uh, completely normal and... Vivid dream with Tom Cruise, not in a gross way. Oh, gosh. Uh, for some reason in this dream, Tom Cruise would not let me do anything but hang out with him <laughs> just, okay just right. constant at his side everywhere he went everything he did and we were like in some <laughs> fancy houses a bunch of parties a jet a private jet uh premiere of some movie he's in yeah uh, didn't know what movie didn't say the, the dream didn't say that's a weird way of putting it the dream didn't say <laughs> the dream didn't say i mean yeah. it really is the dream didn't say <laughs> but i but i spent like just you know the entire dream with tom cruise hanging out and he'd be like um hey let's go get burgers okay cool and then i would get in a car with tom cruise and we go get burgers and say hey i was thinking maybe a movie or something you want to do that was just, should we go out or should we do it in my theater i'm like i don't care either way and tom he's like okay well we'll still do it at home so we'll just tell everybody we're downstairs like that kind of it was just like a weird he couldn't that do anything really if i wasn't with him which made me uncomfortable i didn't like it anyway yeah, yeah. so that's going on the dream was specifically <laughs> tailored in such a way that i always not just once not just after the dream but always noticed his middle tooth the whole time mm -hmm. the dream was prominent about it almost like the middle tooth was larger than the other teeth <laughs> like it was way more prominent yeah yeah so I just did, did he not... ever suggest hey let's go for a run <laughs> no no we never did run which is funny because you'd think in a tom cruise dream in you'd your run. dream you'd like you'd want to see him run too. Yeah. yeah or jump on a couch or some other stereotype about him but right none of that happened and also the dream had no uh just uh scientology in it at all like any references or any hey we're going to church today <laughs> at scientology church or whatever none of that so it was just tom uh, cruise palling around with tom cruise it was really weird that's funny um and he I, uh, made me he made me do work. He made me like rake rake leaves and uh what was the other thing? Really? Yeah, to clean. Did he a, rake them with you though or did he just stand by with his arms folded and watch you rake no, leaves? No, he stood he wouldn't do it with me. He just stood there and was drinking or on a phone or something, but he was always oh, within earshot and I'm out there raking leaves. What the hell's that about? <laughs> Tom Cruise put you to work. Yeah. Uh sometime over the weekend I listened to a Howard Stern or part of a Howard Stern interview with um uh, Seth Rogen. Mm. <laughs> so I, I went to a talk, I drove up to Tom Cruise's house. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he, he apparently had to meet with Tom Cruise for some movie thing. And I'm trying to think of what, he didn't say what it was for, and I'm trying to think of what they ever did together. But um, oh. he said that he had to pee on the way in so badly that up the winding drive, he pulled off for a second, grabbed a Snapple bottle, 
peed into a Snapple bottle and then drove up the rest of the way to Tom Cruise's house because he didn't want to show up at the front door and go, hey, Tom Cruise, nice to meet you. Can I use your bathroom? Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. And then on the way back down the windy road, he notices a bright red light of a camera basically right where he was pe- <laughs> right where he was peeing into the Snapple bottle. <laughs> did Tom Cruise say anything about it? Like uh No, he never did. Never did, but he apparently owns you know, has has a, a tape, a blackmail tape of Seth Rogen peeing into a Snapple bottle. Well this is just odd. I yeah. just was trying to find out what movie maybe they worked on. Yeah. And I can't yeah. find anything, but what I did find on IMDB is an entire listing for Seth Rogen talks preacher and his hilarious Tom Cruise encounter with Tracy Bear. I don't know who that is. is it a podcast. So it must or have been another like another uh, another interview. I guess. But how do you get your? How do you get a single listing on IMDb for a story you told once? You know what I mean? Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Either that, or this is a. Is it a podcast? What is this? It looks like it is. Young Hollywood is the is the show. Oh, yeah, I'll okay. bet it's an interview. That's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also, uh, rest in peace, David Warner. That's bad news. Oh today. yeah, I know. Yeah, I love that guy. The Gosh, uh, dang it. the best Jack the Ripper, if you ask me. I I agree. He's also find me find me a better Jack the Ripper. All the time. Every time we reference there are four lights, we're we're talking about that guy. He's the oh, Cardassian. Yeah, right. Every yes. time I think of Time Bandits, Cardassian. I think of his Devil Guy. Whenever I think of yes, uh, don't touch it. It's evil. <laughs> my favorite moment in all of Titanic is him standing right at the part that split. Um, oh, yeah. Tom or Tron, of course. Tron, uh, yeah. Looking at one of the, one of Hollywood's first Easter eggs. They had a little Pac-Man going on that screen. He was looking at all the time. <laughs> right. Yes. David Warner was awesome. That guy was great, he was and awesome. he was Commander yeah. or Admiral Gorkin in uh, Star Trek VI: Undiscovered Country, which uh, was him. He was the Klingon ambassador who wanted peace. He was like kind of your mm. your Gorbachev of uh, of science fiction, mm. and. Uh, got shot but because of him because of him and his sacrifice they they figured out a way to make peace with the klingons that was pretty right cool. right star trek f- six five? five five or six i think it was yeah. five, six six undiscovered country or undiscovered country six five was the yeah. terrible one that shatner made yeah, yeah. final frontier or no, way, no way home no, no way no way home there's no way home from that horrible directing <laughs> job <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we also got some kind of other. I want to hear about Tom Cruise's uh, Top oh, Gun. Sir, let's yeah. let's do that first. Uh, you went okay, and saw yeah, yeah, yeah. you went and saw the Maverick and uh, I saw Maverick. Yeah. But you know, in your in your notes, you say how was Top Gun two, and I would say Top Gun two is a much better title for what I saw than Top Gun Maverick. Mm. Um, it, it's obviously the the movie does focus on Pete Mitchell, aka Maverick, and the, and his whole Top Gun sure. post Top Gun lifestyle, where he hasn't. He hasn't left. He hasn't uh, moved on from being a captain. Uh, he doesn't want an admiral position. He doesn't want. He doesn't want anything but just to stay captain sure. because he's haunted by the loss of Goose. But now there's this young son, uh, played by Miles Teller, the son of Goose, who has the same cheesy mustache as Anthony Edwards, wears the same Hawaiian shirt as Anthony Edwards, sits at the same piano as Anthony Edwards, and plays. Uh, great balls of fire, just like Anthony Edwards. Yeah, that's his deal. Uh, He's that uh, guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Didn't did it work for you though? Did was it fun? That said, it was it was a a, a very enjoyable popcorn flick. It yeah. was um, you know, it's we're not going to see anything about it come Oscar time. Maybe maybe one of the technical awards, sound effects, or, uh, you know, editing or sound design or sure. visual effects or something. But um, it it did enough fan of the first film service, but added enough new stuff. It's like okay, it's not a complete rehash, but it's also a you know, it's also very very. Um, there's much. There's a lot of payoff for people who who really enjoyed the first film. You got to see Tom Cruise riding his motorcycle alongside fighter jets flying because you know apparently that's a thing. Yeah. You have to have a um, a beach sport of some sort, a shirtless beach sport being yeah. being played. Of course you do. Did you? So I know. Uh, I know we get a Val Kilmer appearance. Do we? Do we ever see uh, Kelly McGillis? Is that we're done there? No, no, uh, we're that. done with Kelly McGillis. Meg Ryan, sadly, I was really hoping for a Meg Ryan appearance because mm-hmm. I thought that would have been appropriate, seeing how really the 
the focus of the film is on this this battle between uh, Goose's son and uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, yes, Danger Zone did play when Magus. You do hear Danger Zone. I of mean, you course. hear all the. You don't hear "Take My Breath Away," but you do hear that. Do 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 that that uh, Harold Faltermeyer or Jan Hammer or whoever the. Uh, that that original that opening song is the theme the top oh. gun theme i know it's not when you're in yeah i keep on you do 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 that's but that's obviously not the song but it's something like that yeah that's uh saying elsewhere i think is what that is elsewhere yeah but uh uh you get uh, John Hamm and Jennifer Connelly kind of being added to the mix, and Jennifer Connelly added so, so well to the the fit. You know, very age appropriate person for uh, Tom Cruise to be uh, have a history with, and 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 that sort of thing. Um, so much so that Mrs. Crazy Neighbor on the way out of the theater said, "No, wait, was Jennifer Connelly in the first one too? Because I don't remember her." And I said, "No, they 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 added her." to kind of replace Kelly McGillis and it, you know, they did it. So they did such a good job of that, that, uh, um, that, uh, you don't even notice it. Nope. She's mentioned in the first movie, Icor. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, and she's 10 years younger than him. Wow. Okay. Well, I hate to say it. I mean, freaking Tom Cruise does look really good for his age. It's all the Thetans. It's and the, really, I mean, so does Jennifer Connelly. They didn't, they didn't seem that, uh, oh, she looks great. That far apart. Yeah. Uh, Tom, no Tom Scared or Michael Ironside. They didn't bring them back. No, I was really bummed. I was, you know, Tom Scared. I was like, all right, that makes sense because isn't Tom Scared? Didn't he pass away? No, he's with us. He's, alive. he's still alive. Okay, no, yeah. um, but I was really hoping we'd get a, a jester appearance. Yeah, Michael uh, Ironside uh, still still kicking too. I would have loved to have seen yeah, either well, one yeah, of them. Was, just bur- just have them. I don't know. Go to the old folks' home, the old Navy place where they are. <laughs> The old navy, <laughs> the old navy. Yeah, go to the old navy, and uh, you'll find them there. I mean, they got Val yeah. Kilmer. You may as well get some of these other dudes back. I you would know? think so. Yeah, yeah. Tim Robbins. Uh, uh, you know, all these, all these uh, people from the first film. You could have brought back. Should have brought back Duke Stroud. Air Boss Johnson is who he played. Duke oh, really? Stroud. Okay. I, he's dead. So don't bring him back. Oh, okay. Don't bring. Don't bring. Uh, he's Duke a desecrated Stroud. corpse at this point. You don't want. Gotcha. That. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, we had some bad news in our in our community. Um, oh, a lot of you have heard his name many times. I've known the guy or talked to the guy since, gosh, I want to say like ELR days. Wow. Um, yeah, he was at the 20, I think he, came, didn't he come to a, a Nurtacular 2015, I think? 15, I yeah, think, yeah. Maybe 14. Yeah. I think it was 15. Uh, Nigel Cox passed away yesterday, and yeah. he was kind of quietly one of the best we ever had. He was an amazing well, yeah. dude, and I didn't even know he had cancer. I had no idea. Oh, I really? Yeah, uh, Boba Fetish. Wow, that. if you if you knew him by his avatar, um, he reached out back in two thousand. I mean, sorry, twenty twenty, not two thousand. Back in twenty twenty, um, uh, to just kind of get some advice uh, from me and Tina about stuff that he was experiencing with chemo, oh, and. Right. Um, uh, and and Tina was able. Tina really connected with him on like, oh yeah, here's some things. Get a heating pad. Get some bone broth. All this stuff. Yeah. And um, but apparently lately he'd been having some some worse. Yeah. Things, worsening health things issues. Things got worse. So he, he went to the hospital. Was there for a couple of days. Uh, was still you know sort of talking to people on social media and seemed like he you know in good spirits. He was feeling like yeah. he was going to be there for a bit and then home. But uh, yeah, we found out yesterday, and I was just like gutted by this news. It's I awful. Know. Yeah, I hate yeah. it. I hate Ooh. when one of you guys does. When one of you, one of you guys, look, I didn't plan on this. When we were all like building community and starting shows and doing all this stuff, I didn't know we'd all get close, and then you know people would have to die. Mm-hmm. That freaking f that f's up mm-hmm. everything. I don't like it. No, sir, I don't. So I hope his family's okay. I hope his friends are all right. Um, he'll be missed. He was yeah, a really, sure. really nice guy. All right. Um, with that out of the way, let's let's see if we can have some fun. He would have liked that. He would have enjoyed some fun. Absolutely, and we'll have a little tribute to him at the end of the show too. Oh, a musical. Good. That sounds musical great. Tribute. We're gonna bring Dunaway into this show because it's Monday. Same. And uh, that's yeah. What we we do. haven't. Uh, it it feels like we haven't had one of these in a while because I think 
Obviously, you were gone last week for your birthday hangover. That's right. Um, That's right. The week before, I think he wasn't able to be part of... Um, uh, he had a meeting or something. Half asses, right? So yeah. we did something else. Ooh, and that, then the week the before that was... Uh, <laughs> was uh, <laughs> the 4th of July, so we didn't have a show. We didn't, so now we got to do this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Brian Dunaway to the show. It's Brian Dunaway. Hi. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hi, man. Oh, hi. How are you? What are you doing, you, mister? I'm doing okay. You yeah. know me. Yeah. It's Monday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's still hot outside. I'm not trying to rub it in anybody's face, but it's not as muggy as it has been. So I'm sorry if you're muggy where you are, but <laughs> for me. Definitely not. Definitely not muggy here. Mugs. No, we're having, we got nice dry weather here, but it is hot. I will say that. Yeah. The day well, before it's yesterday, dry, it's a dry heat. Brian, it's a dry Dunaway. heat. Let, let, let me tell you. Let me tell you about my my office air conditioning. Do it. What it, the hotter it gets outside, the colder it gets into my room because mm. my office is attached to people who work outside, mm. and so the hotter it is, the temperature decreases. Right now, it's around sixty five degrees in my office. I'm not joshing. That's kind of cold. Literally. 65 yeah you and, need a, that's jacket weather in, in a building like that you need to have a jacket yeah, yeah. yeah. and then i go outside and it's like in between when i open my door sometimes a tornado forms it's that much of a difference between <laughs> pressure and <laughs> and like, the, like a little <laughs> cold friend comes in and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man you can't predict this weather uh well all right it's good to have you here we're gonna play a little morning half asses it's been a bit since we've done this so let's play it hey brian how does it yeah. work and how do these people win prizes well, it's, uh, it's like this. Welcome to the Morning Half-Asses, a trivia game where I'm actually going to be giving you two the answers. I'm going to give Scott and Brian a category and six possible answers, three of which are correct and three that are incorrect. Depending on how confident you feel with the category, you can provide one, two, or three guesses. But if you get any of them wrong, you get zero points for that round. Uh, guess one, get it right, you get a point. Guess two and get them both right, gets three points. And if you guess all three correctly in that round, you get five points. And the player with the most points after three rounds wins the prize for their contestant. Nice. Contestants are going to be pulled from members of the Tadpool that aren't able to listen live. Uh, Scott, you're going to be playing for Andrew Minier from or Minier, Minier from Indiana. Minier's. Indiana. Minier's. Sweet. And Brian, you're going to be playing for Chris from Calgary. So, Chris from uh, Calgary. I like Chris that. From I like the vibe of that. You like the yes, Calgary? Yes, a little, a little uh, Canadian Chris from Calgary. Yeah, it's like the Olympics, but not. Anyway. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I see you both are in the game. Let's go and get things started, and uh, let's let's go easy on you. Uh, yes, with, please. With, one, with a couple of these questions. Let's start with this one. Characters that survived the film. All right, so characters oh, okay. that... That made it through their film and survived. Uh, Dumbledore in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Major Kong in Doctor Strangelove. Corporal Hudson in Aliens. Anakin Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. Henry Hill in Goodfellas. And Bambi in a little movie called Bambi. <laughs> All, right. Um, All right. Who survived so in, in, the in, film in, they in, were in? in the, okay, so that one film, that not one later film. on. I right. gotcha. Right. Oh. Um, I mean, one of these. Ghost? Does, that, one, does one, that count as being. Uh, one of these I have an actual technical question about, but I can't ask it until we're. Right. We know That's the what answer, I was so. kind of. All of these feel wrong. Well, three, <laughs> three of them are correct. I, I know which. I think I know which three, but I still have a tech question about one. But anyway, I'll lock in my answers here. Okay. All right. Scott's locked in. in. Aliens. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to lock in. That's the only one I feel confident about I, okay. all the rest of them like second guessing uh scott you said uh, dumbledore henry hill and bambi brian you also said bambi bambi, bambi. Quick, bambi did survive at the end of bambi it was bambi's mom that died yeah. um and bambi's dad uh, and then mommy. Yeah. gets the five pointer yeah dumbledore survived harry potter and the order of the phoenix Look he just didn't survive the deathly hallows part one yeah oh uh, that's where i was getting that's yeah. what i wasn't sure about uh, and and yeah, of course, Anakin Skywalker died at the end of Return of the Jedi. Force yeah, Ghost Force is not Ghost. alive. Well, that's Force what Ghost I, is not that's alive. That's my question. Yeah. Is it because Force Ghost sure can get around and talk and tell you shit? Like, they, yeah, but and they, they can, can literally can... move things, right? No, he can't move things. He can just sit there and say, "By I'm the way, Patrick Swayze, by the way, I'm sorry. Ladies, you're thinking of Patrick Swayze moving yeah. sorry, things." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
<laughs> moving a wheel of uh, with clay on it. That's what he moves. Okay. Oh, half blood. That's right, half blood prince. Not, uh, not. Um... Uh, Deathly Hallows Part 1, correct. Yeah, but yeah, Order of the Phoenix is only book five, so he was still around for that. Right. Uh, the one that really, maybe I cheated, not really cheated, but I just watched, did a rewatch of Goodfellas, and that mm. was, that, yeah, that's that was cheating. fresh that's on cheating. my mind. Yeah. I can't believe you, can't believe you practiced. Although, no. although they have that moment at the very end where he opens up his front door to get the paper, uh, and he's in witness protection, and he kind of looks out as if maybe something's about to go bad, and you don't really know. It's it's left a little bit weird, and uh, yeah. even though the real story it's based on, he lived, but anyway. Uh, good job, Brian. I, I do beat I, you. Do I, do I get this explaining when I win? Yeah, you do. <laughs> okay. I'm just do. curious. Yeah, you do. I was seeing if it was payback or if it was something. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, go to question number two. See how well you guys remember your deadly sins. Question oh. number two: the seven deadly sins. Uh, which of these are actual deadly sins? Gluttony, lust, idolatry, cowardice, wrath, and hypocrisy. Ooh. Uh, well, when did we see yeah. seven? Uh, that'll probably help. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. How many of these were in there? Let's see. <laughs> so three of these are in those. Um, I think that's it. Boom. Okay, Scott's locked in. And Brian's locked in. Locked in. Yeah, All I'm right. not sure about that third one. Yeah. yeah um, the guy uh, forced to sit there at his uh, at his breakfast table, eating nothing but oatmeal, mm. tied to his chair. It just explodes. And it just that, that was blows up. That would be your gluttony. Yeah. The oh, uh, oh. The, the dude uh, who uh, <laughs> the guy that was forced fit, fit, forced to eat would be cowardice. That is not. That would yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. be gluttony. The, I, uh, we should have demanded a burger. The uh, the dude that uh, had to do horrible things uh, in a uh, uh, in a, a strip club or a oh, oh, okay, champagne, in the champagne like room. Yeah. I was thinking, whole poop is not. Oh, the guy with the the okay. metal, yes. yeah, the metal Damn, yeah. dude, the metal gimp yeah. suit, and that's that guy who's always it, making that face. It's that guy, that actor that is always making that face, and I want to say he was in what was it? Was Alien it, uh, Three. He was in Alien Three. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's what he is. And other stuff too, but die? that guy's he's a trip. He didn't die in seven, no. no. Uh, you guys both picked gluttony and lust. That's correct. Uh, Scott, uh -oh. you said cowardice. Damn it. That is incorrect. Damn it. Oh, no. So uh, zero points for Scott that round. Uh, Wrath Which was the other one. Which makes sense because he was trying to push. He was trying to push Brad wrath. Pitt to get angry, and, and Brad That's Pitt was, was Wrath. Yeah. <sighs> and uh, Brian, uh, Kevin odd. Spacey was Envy. Chad, right. so TV's Travis one? says he was you also an Alien one, so. Resurrection. Okay, so let me explain why I won it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it was Alien Resurrection, not three. It's four. <laughs> oh, He's Alien it. Resurrection, right. Yeah. He's yeah. the guy. He's right. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. Yeah. He wasn't in and both. And he does he die in, in that one. <laughs> oh yeah, dies in everything. And I always dies think I always think he's in Terminator, but he's not. He just there's that scene where the, the guy dad. who yeah making kind yeah. of the same face. <laughs> yes, right with the uh, yeah the 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 uh, liquid sword up through his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That was a hell of a thing. Yes. All right. All right. Well, oh, we got ourselves a game. It's four points to five points. Let's get Whee! to question number three. And this question is left-handed presidents. Which of these are oh. left-handed presidents? Barack Obama, have this one? Franklin okay. Delano no. Roosevelt, Benjamin Franklin. Oh, we've had a lot of president ones. We haven't had this one yet. Oh, Barack okay. Obama, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Benjamin Franklin, James Garfield, Herbert Hoover, and Theodore Roosevelt. Mm. Which of these? You, you sound like you said like about 12 presidents. Because <laughs> <laughs> you made me start over, Brian. <laughs> That's right. I don't have any freaking idea on this. Well, you, know, um, you, could, you could hedge your bet and lock in with zero if you really oh. think Brian is going to screw the pooch. But uh, Ooh, that's yeah. not bad. That's that's a pretty good one. Um, um, oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm just gonna. I don't know. Uh, I'll do this. I'll just. Um, just I'm doing one. I, I, I don't know. <sighs> I'm just, um, I don't, I don't pause. Uh, I got at least, I got to, I'm going for it. Going for it. All right. Okay. Roll okay. the dice. All right. Roll oh my the gosh. Dice. All right. Here we go. Uh, Barack Obama and yes. James Garfield. Yeah. Both, both left-handed. Oh. Very good. Oh you guys. Uh, I knew uh, Obama was, but I wasn't sure about Garfield. 
uh, Herbert Hoover, the other left-handed president. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, neither left-handed nor a president, and uh, neither were either of the Roosevelts. Uh, well, they were not, yes. not left-handed. They were both presidents. They were both presidents. They were, yeah, were exactly. Yes. Yeah, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt ain't going to be no left-hander. He, he, would, uh, <laughs> exactly. he ain't doing that. Uh, so congratulations to Brian. His guest yeah. his guest in getting right of two gave him three points for the – the narrow victory. Well done. That rap bastard is what you are. And and uh, that was an absolute guess on the Garfield. So in your face, I figured it was Monday. Yeah. It felt like, uh, you know, <laughs> it felt like Garfield like ate Mondays. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. yeah well perfect. done. You did great. I I mean, I, the, the, I don't know why. I just didn't know any of these. That Garfield thing was a po- full guess. Oh. Yeah. yeah, Obama. I knew. I knew that. Oh, one. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yeah, they talked about that I a lot. I didn't know that either. I'm yeah. sure he's like, "Would y'all just shut up?" Oh, would you know what? Yeah, I can left- now picture him shooting a basketball with his left hand. Right. Really? I can see okay. it. Yeah. Right. There's a, there's this famous video where somebody was like, he was going to a, through a high school or something, and somebody tossed him the ball, and he went way out past the three pointer line toward the door and just let it fly, and it, he sank it like just <laughs> all net. And I can picture which side he's shooting from now. I wish I would have thought of that. If that's what the... you want from your president. Yeah, you want a good shot. You want him to <laughs> those things, right? Yeah, you want him to be able to sink his threes, really. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's important I want, stuff. I want a president who I look at and go, holy crap. Yeah. That guy's amazing. <laughs> that guy can play basketball. Uh, mush uh, potatoes, right. according to Ken Jennings, Benjamin Franklin, neither left-handed nor president. Oh. Uh, <laughs> mush potatoes <laughs> is saying that Franklin, Franklin signed the Declaration of Independence with his left hand, according to legend. But um, but he's not a president, right? No. Well, he wasn't a president, but this also, the the, 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 the Ken Jennings card says not left-handed nor president. Also, yes. I would argue that he probably signed it while in a hot tub with a bunch of naked was French it, ladies and uh, used his left the, hand because his right hand was busy, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Yes, wasn't Brian? Was like, uh, trivia question, too, that Benjamin Franklin, he's, he was omnidextrous or something, and he oh, used both, and be. so it was a trick question. You know. know that's possible. Although I that I would be surprised if the Ken, the the card said ambidextrous, <laughs> yeah. right? I think like, it is ambidextrous, like, not omnidextrous, but yeah, not omnidextrous. <laughs> yes, was that, <laughs> where can do, was that where you can do the feet too? I think that's where you can do the feet. No. <laughs> it's omni omnidextrous. Yeah. No, that's where you I'm can omni, read two. You can read two science magazines at the same time. That's <laughs> omnidextrous. The Dodge omnidextrous. There you go. Dextrous. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Uh, they're running out of car names. Anyway, well done, Brian Dunaway. The point, the important point is, we got a winner there, and the winner is uh, who? Who won, Brian? And what they win? Oh, again? I'll tell you the winner and Chris. what they got. Good point, uh, Chris from Calgary. You're going to get a copy as far of. Uh, I'm sorry, of as far as the eye, and Cepheus or Cepheus protocol. I think it's Cepheus. Yeah, oh. I think that's right. Cepheus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't worry, Andrew from Indiana. You're getting Drake Hollow. Drake uh, Hollow. As a, as a runner Ooh, that's guy. a great one. I like Drake Hollow. Yeah, Drake cool. Hollow is good. Yeah, Actually, that, the runner-up yeah. runner may have got the best single game, but I think uh, the other two oh, combined. God, here we go again. They make it up for it. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian made the wrong person wins, what I'm saying. Just kidding. Oh, Congratulations. Well, You're I just picked, a winner. In order, and the first two go to the winner, the second, the third one goes... Uh... <laughs> I'll say this. I think Drake, Drake Hollow is already on the Xbox Game Pass. So, you know, if you already have it. Is it? Know, oh, that's cool. Saying. Yeah, I'm I'm saying, that's how I played it. No, oh, well, look at you. You're a fancy man. Oh. Uh, hey, tomorrow <laughs> afternoon, me and Brian Dunaway finally tackling all things Kirby. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, NES finally. up through the uh, probably 16-bit era of Kirby, the uh, one of my favorite game series of all time, despite its cuteness. Uh, I I adore it. I adore adore all things Kirby. Good. Adoy. See? Adoy. Adoy. I adoy. <laughs> I do adoy it. You guys have my day better. I appreciate you. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. Uh, you make ours better, yeah. too. And tomorrow at 3.30 Mountain Time, we'll make it even better with that episode of Play Retro. So if you like retro gaming and uh, you think you might enjoy what, a show about what was it, your check favorite, it out. What was your favorite Kirby, Scott? Do you have a favorite I st- Kirby I have a still. I still have a favorite Kirby, but it's a little complicated because um, it's the original Kirby on the NES, but right. it's the one that they remastered and re basically remade it for the Game Boy Advance, and it looks okay, yeah. a, it looks a billion times better. But the structure of the game is still my favorite structure of, of any Kirby game. So yeah, um, Kirby Adventure, I, like I love them all. They're all good. The SNES game's amazing. I really like the new one that's on the Switch, which is the highest selling Kirby game of all time now. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But there's a lot to like and a lot of interesting stuff around it. Uh, Kirby Forever. Kirby's also OP I, and Smash Brothers completely o- overpowered. That that's guy. because he's a god. 
Yeah, he is a god. <laughs> he's the Kirby god of the god. stars, right? He's Kirby God. Yeah. yeah. And he is he is omnidextrous. He is omni everything. So uh come yeah. check it out. That'll be tomorrow. Brian Dunaway, always fun having you on, man. I hope you have a, a great day oh. in your cold office. Thank you. Bye now. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well done. We have a little bit of time for news. Let's do a bit of that. It's the news, and it's brought to you by... Brought to you by Genie, our intrepid and amazing mod for all things frog pants. May COVID be behind you faster than fast. I agree. Yeah. Get that out of there. She's still got some lingering uh, symptoms, and uh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully those clear soon. My dad and my stepmom have it well my dad just got over it but my stepmom got it so his was man, a pretty mild run closing. right he did okay yeah. With it? yeah yeah he did go on the pex pex lovid which apparently does taste as horrible as everybody says oh is it a drinky thing you got to drink it i guess so yeah i didn't realize that i thought it was just a uh is it thickened mm. <laughs> i don't know mm. that i don't know and i don't want to i don't want to answer that well good stuff anyway Janie, we hope you're feeling better and soon uh, moving on to some news stories like this one. We got a guy who was arrested for drunkenly running around campgrounds with a pelican. Yeah. Now the pelican wasn't naked. I guess <laughs> really? the pelicans okay. are always naked. Pelicans are nude he... by nature. <laughs> Nothing you can do about that. But anyway, police in Idaho have re- arrested a man they say was caught drunkenly running around the campground with a pelican. According to the Madison County Sheriff's Department, they were alerted to the bizarre disturbance at the Warm Slaw Slough? Probably Slough. Slough. Probably yeah, because that's how it's That's how it's spelled on the office, right? That's, yeah. It's like Slough. slough. Uh, Warm Slough. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. God, no, that just gross. sounds... Warm Slough Campground. Ugh. <laughs> this is in Rexburg. Uh, my wife went to school in Rexburg. We used to, she used to drive down here on the weekends and brave the snow and spin out in ice the whole time. Really? When she'd come to see okay. me. Yeah. Anyway, by a bystander who called to report uh, that three inebriated men... Quote, had caught a pelican and were cre- uh, carrying it around the campground, East Idaho News reported. Responding officers initially gave the three men a warning for harassing the bird, which is protected <laughs> by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Uh, two of the men then began shouting at the uh, at, shouting at and flipping off officers. Oh, giving uh, them the bird. Yeah, love that. Uh, one of them was, quote, causing a disturbance with the families and the kids at the river's edge. The man was arrested after grabbing for an officer's vest resulting in charges of misdemeanor disturbing the peace and resisting or obstructing officers. It was not immediately clear if that was the same man holding the pelican or not. <laughs> so yeah. hard to tell. Is, yeah, how, uh, how can you yeah. tell in this day and age who's got the pelican yeah. and who doesn't? <laughs> uh, not sure if that's the guy holding the pelican that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, or it's... Or grabbing it's, for the vest. Maybe it's his wiener. Uh, look yeah. at this. Uh, what, I, did you yeah. said that? Did you did you read somewhere that this was a nudist thing? Because I'm not seeing that. I don't know why I keep bringing that up. It's not, he's not naked. He's just drunk. I don't know why yeah. I'm associating yeah, he's just him. Drunk. Yeah, he's I don't a know fully why. Fully clothed doing man. This. Well, we don't know. We assume. I think they would have put that in the headline: naked man drunkenly running around. In my around head, he's naked. I can't change. I can't get it out. <laughs> You see the word campground, you immediately think, oh, it must be a nudist game. Yeah, <laughs> or Warm Slough maybe did it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe that would do it. Oof. Ooh, that sounds like a thickened liquid right there, Warm Slough. Ooh, mm. Warm Slough. It t- definitely sounds like a warm, thickened liquid, yeah. which is room the temperature worst kind of thickened, yeah. thickened liquid. About 80 degrees or so. I'm going to clarify uh, when I when I pronounce it. i got to make sure I pronounce it so people don't think it's thick and liquid. It's not three words. It's two words, thickened Thickened. Liquid. It's been thickened. Cre- it's past created. Tense. They created thickness in it's it. It's a past tense word. Thickened. Yeah, not thick liquid. and liquid. Right. I don't even know what. What even would that be? Thick and liquid. Thick not and liquid. I mean, it would be a description of what that stuff is, right? That, yeah. Well, it's both thick and liquid. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. People listen. All right. Yeah. Write it down. If you can email me or tweet about it. <laughs> yeah. Pronounce it correct or uh, spell it correctly. Here's a here's a story that's pretty weird. Uh, okay. Ecstasy disguised as Lucky Charms cereal has been confiscated. <laughs> oh, confiscated. So it's not even the cereal like the like the kibble part. Marshmallows. It's just the marshmallows. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, on July 19th, officers were dispatched to a call at a local local shopping district. Officers contacted two male suspects uh, <laughs> after they after a short foot pursuit. How does that mean contacted? Officers contacted two male suspects. 
And after Hi, a short, uh, how's it going? How's it going? Uh, I'm you, contacting you. Have you have time to? Do you have to, <laughs> time to come in? I found you my contacts. I'm contacting. <laughs> um, they got in a short uh, uh, foot pursuit, uh, pursuing each other's feet. I guess I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> recovered two loaded handguns and a large amount of suspecting uh, suspected drugs. Shown in a photo of the drug seizure, the guns were located in the in the mail on the mails rather. The Ontario Police Department is sending this notification as a safety warning that in the seizure was located suspected ecstasy that is made to appear to be Lucky Charms marshmallows. That is an odd yeah, sentence. So keep your eyes open for a box called Oops, All Ecstasy. Yeah. yeah don't get that one. That's Ooh. the wrong one to buy. Uh, it's sus- got uh, blue diamonds, uh, purple horseshoes, <laughs> and uh, white crosses. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Suspect vehicle had several bullet holes in it. I don't know why they're telling us that. Oh, jeez. That's either from a previous altercation or... Ontario police open fire. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so that's the thing. Don't eat those. Uh, this one's pretty bad and good at the same time. <laughs> uh, chess robot goes rogue, broke a seven-year-old player's finger. <laughs> that's the Queen's uh, Gambit right there. Yeah, no kidding. Um, a damaged ego is usually the worst injury in a chess game like this. But in Russia, Seven-year-old child playing with robot was forced to interrupt game when machinery suddenly snapped one of his fingers, breaking oh, it. Please, please tell me that before the game, the robot said, "I will break." I you. will break your <laughs> finger. I will, I will break you. I will break you. The incident on July nineteenth, to another nineteenth of July thing, mm. was reported by state-owned news agency RIA Novista, which is uh, I don't care about that. Um, anyway, they quoted the vice president. <laughs> I don't know why they have to tell us who they're all associated with. That's weird. The news agency, yeah. Like who cares? Anyway, which quoted the vice president of the Chess Federation of Russia recalling what appeared uh, to happen, according to Sergei Smagin. <laughs> Smagin. Smagin. Smagin a finger. <laughs> the chess robot broke the boy's finger when the child went in uh, for a swift move without waiting for the necessary time for the machine to complete its action. Uh, the boy is all right, oh. says the quote. They put a plaster cast on the finger to make it heal faster. Uh, yes, there are certain safety rules, and the child apparently violated them. And uh, when he made a move, did not notice he had to wait. Uh, this is an extremely rare case, the first I can recall. <laughs> says so basically, he went to reach for a piece that the robot was maybe still moving or yeah. something, and yeah. uh, the robot grabbed his finger like it was a piece. Oh yeah, he crushed it, which sucks. Oh. I mean, I, I, I'm I, they don't say, but I'm sure he got it set, and it'll probably be fine, but... Oh, it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, you'll never play chess again. No, nope. kid, you're done. You're out. Chess, chess is injury. over for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna call that the news and take a break. When we come back, Stephen Schleicher will be here. We're gonna try to make a little sense out of all that Marvel DC stuff yesterday yeah. or well, last and, week and other Comic Con and other cool Comic Con non Marvel news. Too. Yeah, I also have a comic I read because of Stephen that I am excited to uh, oh, cool. recommend. And this, is a, this isn't this is even the other one I already recommended. The Eight, the eight Billion uh, Genies is amazing and continues to be. New issue, I think, oh. this week, next week? Anyway. Okay. Uh, but I have a new one to recommend that's actually done and done that uh, is now in like volumes. You can just get it and it's fantastic. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk about it. Anyway, that's all coming up here shortly. Before that, though, a song from Brian. Yeah, let's uh, talk about a uh, uh, an origin story for a musician here. Uh, as a teenager, Quinn DeVoe was uh, raised on the music that his mom listened to, a lot of 80s R&B favorites, as well as his dad's classic rock stuff. Um, grew up in Gary, Indiana, left his home, drove across the country when he finally heard Muddy Waters for the first time. And, and it was the, the confluence of all three of those bands that uh, put him together. Um, Quinn Devereaux is the, uh, the head of the band, the California Honey Drops, and uh, they've released a brand new album, or a brand new single, sorry. Um, the first song on this single, it's B-side or the A-side, is Very Best Thing. Here is Quinn Devereaux and the California Honey Drops. This is all some kind of weird ass science fiction thing, right? You're someone else's enjoyment monkey. How about a booby? You know the guy's got talent. This is the morning stream. Eh, 
And we're back from the break. Brian, who was that song? Yeah, and... that is uh, Quinn DeVoe, D-E-V-A-V-E-A-U-X, if you want to look him up. And the California Honey Drops in a brand new song called Very Best Thing. That's some R&B funk right there for you. Wow. Middle of the show R&B funk. Mm. Yeah. Tasty. Yes, it is. All right, check this out, you guys. This right here. Steven Schleicher. Steven Schleicher. <laughs> hey, look who it is. It's our old pal Steven Schleicher. Joining us, as he always does from, does from Hayes, Kansas, in the headquarters of MajorSpoilers.com, where he's been patiently paying attention to all the, the goings-on at Comic-Con Ooh, San Diego this So year. much stuff for you to watch over there, like yeah. all the things going on there. Yeah. So many things. Oh, He's robotic. Only two trailer. Oh, oh I'm sorry. A, <laughs> they sound drunk and robotic. Uh, How many languages do you speak? How many languages? That's really weird. I yeah, should, you're a little robot. You I should play it? it back so you can hear it. He's probably fixing it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that just for fun. <laughs> Hang on a second. I always like doing this. How about that? Oh, that's much better. No, I can't hear you. Way yeah. better. Oh, yes. maybe you don't hear us, though. Maybe he doesn't hear us now. Okay, hold on. He's robotic. Only two trailer. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> He sounds drunk. <laughs> I freaking love it. Oh, it's so good. Steven, are you there? Did we lose him? I can uh, re we, uh, we might have lost him again. I can re-add him. Let's try that. Okay. Oh, wait. No, he's still in there. Steven, do you hear us? We we know yeah, hear you. Good. I don't know if you can hear us. Can you? Whoops. <laughs> That's funny. You, you do always type... In that, in that voice, or you know that quote unquote voice, like if you text me, like I know, hear you, yeah, you know, you know, give put song in folder. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I don't either, but I love it. I don't know either. Oh, hi, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can oh, hear you. you. Oh, hi. You can hear us. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, in a weird way. Yes. Yeah, you're on okay. like a. Oh, do we sound weird to you? No, 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 no. I've had to switch to the outboard speakers. Oh. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, we hear a little, not a little echo, but just a little bit of a delay. Yeah, you're okay. fine. There we go. You're totally fine. How's that? Uh, that's good. Listen to how drunk you sound. I'm, I want to play oh, this for you. Listen to this. So many things. Oh, he's robotic. Only two trailer. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm drunk. Again. That sounds so <laughs> drunk. Robot. <laughs> uh, I freaking love it. Anyway, no, no, uh, no, no harm. No harm. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, Steven, no welcome problem. to the show. It, uh, I mean, Boy, howdy, there was a lot last week. Like, San Diego exploded with Man. information. I didn't think it was going to be that much stuff, like as much Hall H stuff. I don't know why I thought that. Um, there, You know, honestly, I don't think there was that much Hall H stuff mm. uh, in comparison to what we've seen in past years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, Marvel came out with a lot of announcements. We can talk about those in a little bit. But, you know, DC only came out and talked about um, uh, the Shazam 2, Fury oh, of the Gods. Right. Yep. And uh, Aqu and not Aquaman, but uh, Black Adam. Black Adam. Yeah. They didn't talk about right. Aquaman too. They didn't talk no. about the Flash. Which, uh, come on, let's be honest. I don't think that movie's ever going to come out. <laughs> he gets a little bit of a mention in the uh, in the Shazam trailer, by the way. The yeah, the and a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people were like, "Oh my God, uh, uh, Ben Affleck is back as Batman." Watch that trailer again because those are all clips from other movies. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's not. This isn't new trailer stuff. Um, do you really yeah. think, I mean, just real quick on the Flash thing, I know Ezra Miller's a nightmare right now to work with, and they're, you know, they're regretting everything. <laughs> yeah. um, but do you think there's a chance they just say, well, let's just scrap it and start over? Let's hire somebody new? No, they'll, they'll, I mean, it's scheduled to come out next year, so who knows? It's next, it's next summer, I want to say. Yeah. So uh, there's plenty of time for heat to die down or for any kind of reshoots to be done, but I don't think we're going to see any reason you could get a new actor and it'd be better than ezra get it brian get it we'll get no, i get it. it i get it uh, <laughs> uh, come on it's a good band reference everybody come yes, on uh well anyway <clears throat> real quick before we get into the meat of what was talked about uh i wanted to thank you for another inadvertent comic recommendation okay. um so you know eight, eight billion genies has been my jam i freaking love it and I like apocalyptic stuff in general, just you, as you know. Mm -hmm. And um, you just nonchalantly on Twitter posted something about a series I hadn't heard of before from Image called Year Zero. And uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one that's coming out, right? Yeah. Right. Well, there's there's one coming out, but there's two volumes of it. So the thing that's coming out, I guess, is kind of prequel-ish or it's, or it's more. Right. It's more of the story or something. 
Yeah. Um, these first two volumes I didn't know existed, and I went and grabbed them both, and I absolutely loved them. They're really hard to explain because they're not normal uh, zombie fare at all. So if you're all mm-hmm. out there going, oh, another Walking Dead, no thanks, that's not what this is at all. In fact, the the, the storytelling techniques are more akin to something like um, anthology series, but they're all happening at the yeah, same time. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely tore through that and loved every freaking inch of every one of those pages. That was an awesome read. So if you're out nice. there and you're, if you're like me and you like your genre comic fiction, uh, year zero, or is it zero year? Crap. Whichever zero it is. Year. Is it zero year? Yeah. I forget. Zero year. Zero year. Uh, zero escaping. <laughs> um, <laughs> grab it because it's great. The first two volumes are out and available in trade and then, uh, of course, digitally. And then uh, the new stuff coming out, I couldn't be more excited about. It's really, really awesome. So thank you for that, Stephen, yeah. once again. Good recommendation. Not a problem. And if you guys are looking for some other great comic books to read, the Eisner Awards were given away Friday night. In the past, it's been Saturday night, but they've switched that to Fridays. And, of course, that's where you're going to see all the great comics coming out. Uh, some of them I've I've talked about on this show before. For example, The Good Asian, mm-hmm. uh, which talks, it's a 1930s um, noir mystery about the first uh, American, Asian, Asian-American detective to do work in the San Francisco area. Oh, uh, yeah. That Perfect. one won for best limited series, but also in the nominations for that is one that, Scott, I keep telling you, you need to read Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, which is basically true grit but with superheroes in space. That's awesome. I need to, that was yeah, the, you've mentioned that one before and I got to freaking get around to it. I think part of me was like, it can't possibly be as good as you say based on the premise, but it sounds like everyone agrees with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. So yeah. if you want to, if you want to read some good comics, there's certainly go and look at the list of the uh, nominees and the winners from 2022. And that'll get you a good place to start on some, some fantastic comics. Yeah. I heard really good things about the good Asian, but also a, a, an image thing. Um, I still mm-hmm. feel like some of the best stuff's coming out of Image these days. Just these. Well, it's all creator owned. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like exactly. I mean, I've, I just feel like that strategy is now such a rad payoff. The freedom, yeah, for the creativity mm-hmm. and stuff. People are given all the freedom in the world to make whatever they're going to make, and I don't know. Kind of love that. Meanwhile, they can still do their big wig stuff. Like you know, McFarlane spent the whole weekend going. I'm back with Capullo. We're doing Batman. Yeah, they're doing Batman. Yeah. Batman it's versus Batman Spawn Kong. again. We're bringing it back after 30 years, or however long it's been. And, you know, so they can still do their big highbrow stuff. But then in the background, you got these rad little books. One small for you, books. one for me. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so I did, uh, real quick, I did take a little time off from the San Diego Comic Con coverage and had one of the best movie theater experiences ever in my life. Whoa, oh my gosh, what? really? Wow. I, wow. I, well, probably in the last 20 years. I went to go see Nope. <laughs> Which is a fine movie. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was me and one other couple in the whole theater. <laughs> that was really? A brand new film? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, wow. I went, and the weird thing was, I went at 4 30 in the afternoon, which I figured, okay, you're going to have a lot of the uh, older people. Mm. There. <laughs> yes. I don't want to say elderly, well, but older well people. Well said. There. Yes, yeah. right. Um, sure. uh, but maybe it's because of the cast that people in my area didn't go. Uh, I don't uh, want to say that everyone here is a racist, but that may have played into it. Sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, no. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But it was an enjoyable movie. But yeah, I and it, it takes me back to the, the times back 20 years ago where I could roll into a theater at, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning and be the only one there and, uh, I do and enjoy like the movie that. by myself. I kind of like that, too. I like being able yeah. to just, I don't yeah. know, get in there and be done. No, I mean, it, it, that, that, I would take that. Like, basically, the order for me is uh, empty theater with just me and Tina, then in a theater full of people who are big fans of the thing I'm watching and, like, cheer when the the first appearance of Iron Man is on screen or the new character mm-hmm. or gasp when, you know, a character that was rumored to be in the movie is on. And then uh, at the very, very bottom of the list is the stuff I usually get, which mm. is uh, mm. talking in a normal voice, pulling out their phone, um... Yeah, uh, assorted assorted distractions with uh, jerks. It says here, uh, here's here's the consensus on Rotten Tomatoes for the film you saw. Admirable for its originality and ambition, even when it reach, succeeds its grasp. Uh, nope adds Spielbergian spectacle to Jordan Peele's growing arsenal. Spielbergian. Got a pretty good audience well, and tomato score. Uh, 80, high 80s, 83, or mid low 80s, I guess. So that seems all right. So, what would you say? No spoilers, but... 
if you've seen Steven Spielberg's early work, yeah. specifically the stuff in the 70s that, that started the summer blockbuster stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom, that's boom, 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 that's boom. pretty much homaged <laughs> slash used heavily slash um, the main point of of this movie. Does does Steven Yoon build a big potato mountain out of mashed potatoes? <laughs> no, but okay. he does have an amusement park. Yeah, that mm. we see in the trailer. So that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah good. Uh, yeah. Michael Wincott uh, is in this, and I love him uh, till the day he dies. So is he cool? Because I like him. He's great. Everybody's cool. Everybody, all the actors he, are good in this. Let me know he's I, cool. He is cool, right? Dude, Michael Wincott yes. is cool. He is the coolest. <laughs> as long as he's cool. Yeah. He's so old Bill in Westworld. If, if you yeah. go and see this and you'll instantly recognize, oh, okay, when they talk about Spielberg movies, I, I see the two or three that they're talking about here, mm-hmm. which is great. But then go ahead and look for, okay, what's the message or what is the other story that uh, Jordan Peele is, is trying to tell here? And I, when you see it, Brian, I'm be very curious what your thoughts are on what the what the message is. Yeah, we we were thinking about seeing it this weekend, then we saw um, Maverick instead. But uh, you said I think nope. this coming weekend is is the plan for uh, for Nope. Did you say Nope when you said you were going to not see it? Did you say Nope? We we asked the crazy neighbors if they wanted to see it, and they said Nope. Uh, <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, just for the three of us, because we're all men of a certain age. Um. The AARP Movies for Grown Ups review says, <laughs> says yeah. a little bit Close Encounters, a little bit North by Northwest, Nope is nonstop entertainment, working with Oscar winner Danielle wow. Kaliulia, I never say his name right, uh, his version of Cary Grant, Peel weaves a wild Western UFO tale, he says. I would not, I would not say North by Northwest for this movie. Really? I really would not. Okay. It, there's a there's the first Spielberg movie that they mentioned. Yes, right on. Mm. There's another S- Steven Spielberg movie that's even bigger that came out in the 70s that kicked off the summer blockbuster. That is this movie to the beat. <laughs> Not close encounters. That one they meant. That's the one they mentioned in the AI. AR, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah, another one. That. Yeah. That you'll figure out. Da-dum. Okay. Da-dum. Oh, I like that Barbie Fieri. Oh, gotcha. Okay, oh, 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 oh. I hear you. Yeah. Space sharks. <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, well, anyway, so there's that. All right. The big stuff from Comic-Con. Um, yeah, don't even know where to start here. There was so much stuff. Well, you know, some of this stuff, known quantities coming soon, like the new Lord of the Rings uh, trailer looked great. Uh, Which looks great. Yeah. All that stuff looked great. But really, uh, I guess the main attraction is Marvel gets a uh, hat wearing Jim up there. <laughs> to announce what the next phase is. Feige. Feige. He always wearing the hat. Jim. Never takes a hat off. Just as part of the rules over there. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, he announced a bunch of movies and what the phase five? Fa- fa- five? Phase yeah, five. so phase yeah. four will end with Wakanda Forever, yeah. which comes out, what, November? Yeah. November, yeah, early November. Yeah, beginning of November. And then phase five will kick off with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which comes out in February of 2023. Is Quantumania a known thing comic-wise? Like, is, is that a word I should it's know? It's the quantum, it's the, you yeah, know. The quantum verse. We've already the seen The quantum verse. Okay. Yeah, like you see that in, well, those of us who've watched uh, Ant-Man and Wasp. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. know about the quantum verse and uh sure well i knew about that from the comics but i thought the mania the quantum mania part was maybe yeah, a storyline i hadn't a, heard or that's just a play on on the word quantum okay. quantum mania sweet all right so you got that yep. and then bill murray will be in that as is modok what has been confirmed yeah. both of those will be in quantum mania. and we don't know who's doing the voice of modok could it be bill murray could like could murray? that be <laughs> That would be interesting. Or if they got Pat Oswalt to, to come back. Will he just know. sound right. like uh, Garfield? Garfield, yeah. yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. why? Wait, 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 though. If you're going to have Bill Murray be Modoc, you just have him, he'd do the whole thing, yeah. right? Hey, I'm just, uh, you know, just a giant floating head with uh, <laughs> little arms, man. That's a pretty, pretty close. That's pretty close. That's good. That's the first time I've ever tried to do a Bill Murray, and uh, you can tell. Yeah. You can <laughs> tell it's, uh, it's an unworkshopped. Uh, you got it. You're on your way. That's an interesting yeah. uh, thing. How come? How come Tom Cruise is the only person not in the MCU? Feels like everybody else is. Why? Why can't Tom Cruise get in there? Did I mean, like oh, him? Was did you not see Iron Man? Iron Man? Uh, oh yes, yeah, Scott hasn't watched that one yet. Which oh, one? Yeah, that's right. Which one? Never mind. Never mind. I won't say. Okay. Anyway, Secret Invasion comes out in spring of 2023. He's not Iron Man. That's, I uh, saw all the Iron Men. He's not Iron Man. What are you guys talking about? What kind of what crack are we smoking today? Who, are there any movies you haven't seen yet, Scott? Oh, does he show up in like some kind of 
Is he in Multiverse of Madness? Uh, maybe you better watch that. All right. Sorry. Okay. I thought maybe they were like, no Thetan, no Thetan's here. Get out of here, Scientology man. We can't have you in our MCU. Anyway, sorry. All the other space aliens in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which comes out May 5th of 2020. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Whole we're lab. getting an Echo series yeah. uh, coming out in the summer of 2023. Loki Season 2, summer of 2023. The Marvels, uh, July of 2023. That's movie. Yeah. Uh, that one, again, if you haven't seen... Um, Ms. Ms. Marvel, Marvel. Yeah. that ties directly into that and leads up to that. So Boy, does I, it. Yeah, does that last scene just go right into <laughs> Goes right Marvel. into it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Blade, you guys were talking about that earlier, comes out in November of 2023. Ironheart, all of 2023. Agatha Coven of Chaos, uh, winter of 2023, 2024. Uh, Daredevil Born Again, spring of 2024. That one, they did say, would be compared to a lot of the other uh, episodes episodic stuff that we're getting on Disney plus Kevin Feige said that this was going to be an 18 episode season. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. With Charlie Cox and, and Vincent D'Onofrio. That's awesome. Uh, this is the, this is born again based on the comic book series and the comic book series, apparently flying off the shelves on Amazon and other bookstores after that announcement. Uh, yeah, they get the, they get the knock on effect going there. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, um, then we've got captain America, new world order may of 2024. And then, Phase five wraps up with the Thunderbolts, a villain centric movie, hmm. uh, July 26th of 2024. And then that will be the end of uh, the phase five stuff. And then we go right into uh, the confirmed films for phase six, which will begin in November of 2024 with the Fantastic Four and will end um, not very long afterwards in May of 2025 and November of 2025 with uh, with two Avengers movies. Avengers the Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars. So maybe we'll see a black costume up here. I don't mm. know. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, and that's that's going to wrap up the, the Phase 6 uh, series of films. And they also said that that will also wrap up their multiverse saga uh, with uh, with Secret Wars. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So that's a lot. Uh, I, I guess the one that surprised me the most on this whole thing uh, was probably the... The wit, the witch one. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Agatha. Agatha. What? Oh, Agatha. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Coming I had no idea they were going to spin that out. Th that they was news announced to me. that a while ago. Mm -hmm. They hadn't given it a title, mm -hmm. um, right. but they had mentioned it. I want to say last year. Mm. Oh, by the way, early word on that, that. I know they showed Sandman, the latest trailer for Sandman, which is coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Early word on that is it is rad. Like it oh, looks cool. really good. Real good. Yeah. Very I want to see how far they go because I hope. I mean, obviously, we see a lot of the Corinthian in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, that's the guy with the uh, mouth for the eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if that is where the first season, if it even goes past that, if that's where that will end. There's so much of that stuff. I wonder how they'll compress it. You know, like the Sandman yeah. ran forever, and uh, mm -hmm. and not all of it. Well, was was the entire run? Um, I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Uh, Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. Did the Gaiman do the entire run of Sandman, or is it, I, pretty sure he did? Because I know there've been stuff since, or crossovers and stuff he's got nothing to do with. But I think, yeah, maybe he was. The point is that entire run is incredible, but it's a ton. It's so much. It's a huge body of work, and I don't know how they're going to break it out into a show. But I'm so looking forward to that. Cannot wait. That stuff's right up my alley. Yeah, it looks. It looks fantastic. Yeah. And I'm down did with you... uh, Jenna Coleman as uh, Constantine. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't have John Constantine in it, she plays a female version. Totally fine. Yeah, who cares? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally fine. Yeah. Scott, did you finish watching or did you continue watching Loki after the couch? Uh, queued up and ready to go. I didn't have time really this weekend because of the stupid state holiday and all my family's in town and mm -hmm. that, that made gotcha. it hard. Okay. So I haven't had a chance, uh, but I'm going to. I'd love those first two episodes. We ended up yeah. watching it for our couch party like Brian mentioned on Friday and I loved it. So mm -hmm. I'm all in on finishing that. Um, I told Kim when that's finished, we need to watch, we need to catch up on some MCU movies. So we're going to, I think we're going to do the Ant-Man 2 first and then do mm -hmm. multiverse. Mm -hmm. But after yeah, Loki, going to do Loki first, then the, and then we're going to roll into those and just be caught up on it. I still don't know if I want to yeah, watch. That actually is a good idea because multiverse stuff, you want to see Loki before uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess yeah, my biggest good. surprise with that, and this, I know we're all late to the game or I'm late to the game on this, but the this design aesthetic of that show completely caught me off guard mm, yeah, yeah, the yeah, tva yeah, yeah i'd love it 
I freaking love that stuff. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, it's like Fallout World or something. I absolutely love how all that stuff looks. So, so anyway, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep cranking through that. Was there anything that you thought we would for sure hear about? I know on the DC side, there's a few that we thought we would like. You know, well on the DC into. side, there was a crazy rumor that was started by a bunch of bullshit websites. Sorry, uh, crazy website <laughs> that were yeah. saying that Henry Cavill was gonna make an appearance at Comic Con and that they were gonna announce uh, Superman Man of Steel two. Right. Yeah. And if you logically think your way through the claims that were being made, uh, you knew that that was not gonna happen at all top to bottom yeah. so that was that was one thing that i think people got upset about i think um on the marvel side people were like well i was really hoping we would hear about fantastic four that's a movie that's like three years away mm -hmm. or two yeah, years away way you're off. not going to talk about that stuff now in fact here's the thing um anything that is further away than the end of 2023 you're probably not going to hear any major news about that yeah, and half because the stuff then is, half the stuff will well, I shouldn't say half, but some of that stuff will get delayed anyway. They all do. Like Yeah, it's either gonna get delayed or they're gonna make changes, or if we blow our wad now, we're not gonna have anything next year for Hall H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna have anything for D twenty three, which again, uh, I I honestly think there was some stuff that was held back that they weren't showing, like a lot of the trailer stuff for yeah. some of the movies that are coming out very soon. That's all D twenty three stuff that's coming up. Yeah. A lot of people were upset. Oh, I'm surprised Warner Brothers didn't make these announcements about Harley Quinn or mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the the Gotham show or any of these other things that are coming out. Well, I'm going to bet that before the end of the year, we get another DC fandom. Yeah, that thing fan. was really big oh, last year. Right. I, they're going to yeah, do their own thing. Yeah, those have been big for two years in a row. So yeah. I And the fact that DC didn't have a booth at uh, Comic-Con and the fact that you know a bunch of, of companies really did not have major Hall H presentations. Mm-hmm. I really think that people looked at what DC did with DC Fandom and what D23 is doing with Disney and everything that they have going on. And people are like, we can get a huge audience if we do it ourselves and stream it. Yeah. And so I think that we're going to see more of that. Coming yeah, they've gone full Nintendo. Year, so. They're like Nintendo with E3 and other events. They're like, yeah. no, we, mm -hmm. we do better when we do this stuff on our own. I don't blame them. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of like having this stuff spread out. I like having more than just this one summer event where everybody tries to cram everything into one weekend. I'd yeah. rather I'd rather have it spread out like that anyway, so that's fine. Um, let's see what else. Oh, they showed a new John Wick Four trailer. That was cool. Yeah, that one actually looked really good. Yeah. And Keanu Reeves showed up uh, to the Hall H Berserker presentation because the uh, Berserker. If you haven't read that, Scott, you might enjoy that. A uh, Berserker is an immortal who doesn't remember his past, but he's basically a hitman for uh, the government, and he's trying to remember his past and put it all together. So, kind of think of an immortal version of John Wick. Oh, but mean, they're going to be coming out with more comics um, and I believe a movie uh, based on that comic book series as well. It just wrapped up, I want to say, last week or last month. Okay. Uh, I'll look comic that book one series up. from Boom Studios. Okay. I just bought The Good Asian so while you were talking. Okay, so good. You're, you're always... <laughs> I think you'll enjoy that. You're my, you're my dealer on this stuff. I always... So I always... Berserker, B-R-Z-R-K-R, -R -R, no, no vowels. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Got it. Berserker, as my daughter used to say, she'd say Berserker. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, there's all your. There's there kind of it that you guys uh, saw coming out of the Comic Con news because I tried to focus mostly on the comic book stuff, but I mean there was game stuff, TV stuff, lots um, of other things. Going nothing on. really jumped at me other than these. You know, I was always interested in seeing what Marvel's doing with their show stuff and all that. Um, I think the new trailer. Oh, I know what I liked the most: the new trailer for uh, She-Hulk: Attorney at Law. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, that looks freaking great. I'm so excited for that. I can't wait. I for it. I love the fact that Ruffalo is. He appears to be really in this a lot, which makes me so happy. Yeah, and he seems mm -hmm. to be having a great time. And I, yeah. I think the humor works. And mm -hmm. it's. I need that from these things. That's the other reason I think Loki is, is strong out of the gate. Is there's yeah. Humor. Also, if you go back and watch that trailer again closely, you'll see Daredevil make an appearance. Yeah, at the very end, he shows up. You mm -hmm. don't get to see Charlie Cox's face, but it's implied. He's got the two little sticks and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I heard some story that Car Charlie Cox thought they were going to be locked in for multiple more seasons on Netflix for Daredevil, and ended up oh really skipping a bunch of jobs as a result, and then they got pulled because of the whole change. I just think it's great that he gets a chance to freaking do this again. And yeah, it would be, be interesting to see that contract because um, Kevin Feige has said Charlie Cox is always our Daredevil, and that was ahead of all these announcements and everything. So people were like, "Oh, there's going to be more Daredevil." Yeah. Uh, 
I, I like that he, they're making it up to him, showing up in the Spider-Man movie, showing up in uh, She-Hulk. Then we're going to see him in 18 episodes, which probably would be like two or three more seasons if it yeah. was on Netflix. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, we didn't get to see him in, uh, uh, what's his name? The Arrow Guys oh, TV show. <laughs> uh, Hawkeye, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> the Arrow Guy. The Arrow Guy. Oh yeah, uh, Arrow. I think is. A... <laughs> I mean, we did. I mean, but we got a Daredevil tie into yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that that's cool. So. And I assume so. This new series show. must be, uh, without spoiling anything, I assume it's a prequel-ish time period than Hawkeye, because there's a certain. Well, we know D'Onofrio's in the new 18 episodes, so it can't be after that. So, a couple of things, Scott. Yeah. If you've seen, if you've seen that Arrow TV show. Yeah, I did. Unless you see a body. Ain't nobody dead. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Freaking uh, Marvel. Also, that Echo TV series, Echo is a protege of Daredevil. So right. I would suspect that uh, he will show up there as well. Make an appearance there do you as think, well. Uh, do you think, uh, um, oh, I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Uh, everyone thinks he's so good looking. Um, dude, dude from uh, Blade Runner guy. What do you think his name? Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Think Ryan Gosling ends up in the MCU at some point? I mean, he really wants to be, and he was—he just is in this uh, Russo Brothers movie, the the Gray Man. Yeah, I and might, he does I'm, a lot of action in that. I'll be recommending so, that this week. I freaking love the Gray Man. It was awesome. I, you know, as much as people are hating on it, it isn't a terrible movie. No, nah, it's a good time. It is a good. I mean, it's a good time. It really is. I mean, if you were uh, to me, it felt like, and and I don't play these games. My son loves to play these games. My oldest one, the first person shooter, the six hero shoot 'em up games six hero yeah you know the first perders person let's be military people going in and doing stuff call of duty uh, games what do you mean i don't know yeah, call game. of duty yeah, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> i don't play those games so no it's but fine it, it's totally fine it, it, it was wasn't sure which one you meant <laughs> could be overwatch could be anything uh you know it, it it felt like i was watching you know action sequence after action sequence after action sequence oh, yeah, and to sure. be honest a lot of people are like well, I don't know where they spent that two hundred million dollars to make that movie. Well, you've got I do six. You've got six huge names. Oh yeah, in this movie, yeah. as far as actors and actresses go, yeah. and that with all the special effects stuff, there's two hundred million right there. Oh, now yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping Netflix doesn't say, "Oh crap, we're not getting the traction we wanted on this," or people are really you know uh, shooting us down on this, and then don't move forward with some other movies because th I know that they're looking for a franchise. Yeah. This could be their, this could be their, um, not uh, fast and furious franchise. What's the one with the mercenaries, uh, that has all the old action heroes in it. Oh, uh, oh the expendables, expendables, yeah, expendables. Yeah. this could be their expendables. It could be like they, that. Yeah. I could yeah, see them doing that. There's a little bit of born identity to it. There's a little bit of, Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of stuff thrown in here. I just think it's very deftly directed, and the cast is insane. Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Anna De Armas. By the way, it's funny to see her reunite with Ryan Gosling yeah. from uh, Blade Runner, and then reunite with Chris Evans from Knives yeah. Out. Billy oh, Bob wow, Thornton's okay. amazing in this. Freaking mm -hmm. Billy Bob doing a whole new thing. Really? And, yeah, okay. Alfre Woodard, amazing cast. They're all great. Yeah, it, those wow. names right there. That's where half your budget went. Yeah, yeah. freaking. <laughs> because I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna bet that yeah. at the low end they each got ten million. Oh, at the, at, at the low end, absolutely. But at the high end, they probably got twenty to thirty million dollars, depending on who they are. So yeah, and if you want to watch five names, five six names right there is is a hundred million dollars. If you want to watch Chris Evans eat scenery, man, he's oh, yeah. great he's, in this. Really? It's it's funny because in Knives Out and in this movie, he plays the villain, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. bad guy. Spoiler alert for Knives Out. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But, Listen, if you haven't seen it yet, I know, right? <laughs> you've lost uh, your chance. Yeah. Which is a total, you know, it seems to be he likes to take these villain roles to counteract his Captain America role. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And it's interesting to see that. Yeah, it is. And I think he's, I, I don't feel like he's been typecast at all. I think this stuff really. No, it does. He does really well with it. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Um, it is. It's yeah. a great, I mean, I know recommendals is Wednesday and I'm, you know, spilling my candy in the lobby here, but. I like the gray man a lot. And if you're just, if you want to have a whole lot of fun, <laughs> it's really fun. And the Russo brothers know how to make really great action. And there is a car chase that rivals yeah. some of the best I've ever seen. It's real good. I liked it. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it. That's a lot, but, uh, all of this stuff is, uh, you know, uh, all over the internet, but of course, major spoilers.com is going to have a bunch of this as well. So make sure you guys check that out. If you want to stay up to date on all things comic-con, 
Uh, Steven, anything else going on over there that you want to mention? Uh, let's see. This week on the Major Spoilers podcast, we're diving back into newspaper comic strips. And oh, we're going to be cool. taking a look at the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe oh, man. newspaper strip that ran in the in the 80s all the way through the 90s. Wow, I didn't realize they did a comic strip, huh? Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. And you can tell right when this came out that it was like, oh, yeah, He-Man's really popular now. And so you're reading along, and then it's like, oh... You can tell right when the movie came out because they introduced these characters yep. into the yep. into oh, the comic really? strip. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, everything it's about also, that entire enterprise was just how do we sell more toys? So I'm not surprised. Kind of yes, because there's the section of the book that I'm reading right now. There are huge chunks of the original strips that are missing that no one can find, and so they're just like, okay, on this in this strip, here was the plot of this strip. And they Weird. have no art for it. Weird. And then you go in and you're reading further, and you're like. The um, husband-wife team who was putting together the newspaper strip kind of reached out to the uh, Mattel people and said, hey, we should do something with this. Is there a way we can collect this? And the person at head of Mattel was like, yeah, do you know who has the original strips for this stuff? Mm, interesting. And so it's like just disappeared to the wind. Wow. Well, as Skeletor always said. I don't think I feel well. Uh, the- <laughs> Uh, there you go. Hey, Steven, this is always fun. I love having you on Mondays and uh, can't wait for more major spoilers during the week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, there's a there's a bit of a, um, a horrible heat wave happening right yeah, now. Yes, please, is there anything? It, it, what should we Stay do with hydrate. that? Oh, it's hydration. That's it. I knew I knew the mm. answer, but I had to hear you say it. Oh, he left. All right. <laughs> he got me this time. Nice. Um, all right. Well done, uh, Steven. Always good to have him here. Got a couple things here real quick, including this Monday morning mashup. Yay! Sent to us by Jamie, who's uh, uh, always doing great work. So thanks, Jamie, for this. As always, yeah. this is a uh, something called the ICU. All right, that's a normal okay. thing. So I don't know what this is, but we're about to find <laughs> out. This. Sit back and enjoy. Well, what do you want to do today? I don't know, but I definitely want to do a lot of talking. I know. Let's go see a movie. I am. I'm gonna. Oh. Welcome to the show, everyone. We're here, and we're uh, not queer, but it's okay. You can get used to it, okay? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Let's see if I can choke on this. See if you can choke on that, Scott. Mm. <laughs> Do your best. <laughs> I'm good so far. Not so bad so far. Even like the, uh, the uh, not Dances with Wolves, uh, uh, Whisper whisper with Sheep. What's that called? Oh, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whisper of the uh, Sheep. That's not Whisper of the Sheep. Brian is the only person I know uh, in Arvada that exists, or anyone that I know of. <laughs> No, that's exists. not what that sentence says. Brian is the only pers- reason I know Arvada exists. There we go. <laughs> a person in Arvada that exists. <laughs> oh, man. Careful sure. with him, though. I once squirted one on a friend, and it didn't look good. Anyway, continue. Claire, what did your mom wipe your butt with? Did they power hose your vajay? What'd they do? What'd they give <laughs> it was you? Den and a sock and an old sock. We used an old sock, and we used it twice. We'd wash it, use it twice, and use it again. The very next day, take another shite, and you'd use your sock again. <laughs> you know what that means, Greg? Oh my gosh, let's let's make it official. I'll fight back, butt naked. That's not it. Hold on. I must have it. Sounds good. I did that. I mean, it's good. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't turn down a big plate of from anyone. It still had to go beep, 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 boop, 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 beep. Whereas now you just, it's not the... Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> People got their boobies out. That's what they're hoping anyway. Yeah, that's what they want. I'd yeah. love to see Facebook take one of the chode for this one. Boy, a lot mm-hmm. of chodes today. Choding. Lots of chodes. It's a chode-heavy show, people. Yeah, very chody. Uh, my office smells like chai tea, by the way. Do you know why? <laughs> Better than smelling like chode. No. <laughs> Make an argument for any positivity about getting a in your throat. Right, exactly. But uh, even people who love do you really want one in your mouth? No. No. Can you make a Wildcats yeah. movie? Why not make a Wildcats oh, no movie? Oh, no kidding. Yeah, we need TV an show. image cinematic universe, an yeah. ICU. Oh, that doesn't quite work. The ICU. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, we can't have the ICU. That's, That's right. Hey, what's Samuel L. Jackson? Oh, he's in the ICU now. Yeah, oh, he's no. in the ICU. Have you guys heard about that? Samuel Sam Jackson has jumped ship and is now in the ICU. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> no. Is, is there anything we can do? Well, yeah, go, go watch the movie. It's a good movie. But, yeah, but he's in the ICU. See you. <laughs> <laughs> How did I forget that we did that? I don't remember that at the all. Whole image cinematic universe, yeah. Ah, it was pretty good, and I don't remember it. All right, I don't remember <laughs> anything anymore. 
All right, well done. Uh, that was amazing. Also, uh, you should have done a UC on this, which is unnecessary censor- censorship, because none of those there were real swear words. was a little bit words. of that, yeah. Yeah, so he combined them. Well done, mm-hmm. Jamie, as always. Uh, a quick email uh, to read. Send and receive email. It uh, is themorningstream at gmail.com, themorningstream at gmail.com. Got one here from Sven from Baseball Camp. Uh, who says uh, howdy? <laughs> says howdy, B and Sting. I was listening to your B stories on episode twenty three twenty two, and I have one of my own that still weirds me out to this day. I was going for a run when a bee flew at my face, landed in my nose, and stung me inside my nostril. Uh. yeah, it gets worse. About a minute of nasally. About a minute of nasally. Whatever that means. Fran Drescher no, sounding. It, oh, I see. There's more to the describing. Sounds. Yeah. Yeah. About a minute of nasally Fran Drescher sounding expletives later, I realized the bee never actually flew out of my nose. Oh my God. Cut to three days later, I'm in the bathroom doing my business when I realized I had just pooped out a bee, uh, which had somehow died inside my body. For the briefest moment, I thought I was demonically possessed, like something out of a bad Candyman sequel. There's no such thing. Uh, but then, <laughs> but then I remember my experience from the sun, or sorry, the run, uh, still didn't make it any less unnerving. But thankfully, nothing came of it behind the initial sting and the lasting mistrust of the great outdoors. Moral of the story: Don't go running, kids. It's bad for you. Buzz, buzz, Sven from baseball camp. P.S. I don't usually get to listen live, so I'd like to submit a sting from behind for titles. If you read this show, somebody add that a sting. From behind, already did. It's uh, it's in there. All right, behind. See, get it. Sting from behind. Yeah, I'm trying to think of behind. worse. Behind. I'm sure there are worse places to get stung than your nostril, but that's a that's high up there. Oh. Yeah, inside, and then the bee never got out. F inside that. Inside your freaking nose. The yeah. Pain. And that oh. means you horked it down your. Uh, through right. Your sinuses. Yeah. Well, what, down at your, what point oh. do you think the bee died? Like. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, won't someone think of the bee? <laughs> I'm worried for this bee. Anyway, I never want to see a bee in my toilet. Ever. Ever. No. No. Nope. Bees are bad. Uh, but they're good for the environment. pooped out a fly. There you go. Uh, that's it for the show. I just wanted to thank Jim Apple. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a play on Tim Apple. I don't know for sure. I think it might be, or maybe that's just his real just name. Just lucky, because 2014 is yeah. when he signed up, and it's always been Jim Apple, so unless he changed it, I guess. But uh, he's been a Patreon since or a patron of the show since 2014. Do you want to be like Jim? Well, there's no time like the present to start. Patreon.com slash TMS. Be like Jim Apple and join up today. Mm-hmm. All right, that's going to do it for the show. Frogpants.com slash TMS is our website. And as always, you can find us uh, everywhere you get your podcasts. Leave a review for TMS. It helps us. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Please People do. People notice it. It pushes us up in the rankings and things or wherever you're getting it, whether it's that horrible Google podcast service, which is the worst ever. It's really, I've, never, oh, I've it's actually so never looked at it. It's so bad. I mean, all my stuff's on there. It's listed, but I freaking yeah. hate it. I never have problems with anything but that. People are always going, oh, for some reason, they Google Podcasts only downloaded two minutes of the show. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. They're just, I don't know why it sucks so bad. There should be no reason. Just they're half assing it. It's weird. Anyway, uh, wherever you get them, leave us a review. That'll do it. We got to play a song. Brian, let's play a song. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, this one is going out to Nigel Cox, a.k.a. Boba Fetish. Um, it's no surprise based on his name that he was a big Star Wars fan. Uh, I don't have any Boba Fett theme songs. I know there was the book of Boba Fett that had a, had a somewhat memorable song, but I do have a great cover of the Mandalorian. This one performed by beyond the guitar, a great cover of the song going out as tribute to Nigel Cox, Boba Fettish. Wow. Um, again, to everybody who knew him, uh, really, really sorry about uh, his loss yeah. and i hope uh hope everybody can i don't know remember how rad he was this happens in our community here time to time and i don't know it's a good just reminder to hug those you're with and be kind to those around you and mm-hmm. be like boba boba fetish he was a really really cool dude all right that's it for us thank you all for being here we'll see you tomorrow this show is part of the frog pants network frog pants network get more shows like this at frogpants.com Are you two heading for Las Vegas? Las (laughs) Vegas? Oh, there's so much spittle coming out of that that audio. She was having um, like a lozenge Ah, in in the scene. She had just put one in there, and then she offered uh, Beavis...